Hey angels, welcome back to my channel. Who has missed me? Okay, hopefully not too much. It's only been two days. Um, really busy weekend. Nonetheless, I'm back again with a brand new video for you guys. This video, as you can see, is about stop chasing men, okay? But before we get into it, I want you guys to follow me on Instagram. That will be right here. And also do not forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to this channel, guys because our next goal is going to be 100K. We already hit 75K, I am so elated, I cannot believe it, and it just feels so humbling that you guys continue to support me, and I'm really excited to continue to grow with you guys as a team, the A team, of course, and we all wanna help each other and uplift each other. We're sisters, best friends, cousins, whatever you want. We are that. Also, before we move further, I know you guys are going to ask me about my hair. I am obsessed with this hair, guys. It is so, so, so cute on me. And it's very, very natural looking. I like the shade of blonde. I realize I love, you know, the golden tones. And this actual unit was inspired by Beyonce. My hairstylist, Mark Anthony, had created this for me and I am in love with it. It is so me. We are actually doing a contest, okay, where for all my New York subscribers exclusively to win a free install and wig, okay, by my hairstylist. So check the description box for all the information on that. Again, it is only exclusive for all my New York subscribers for a free install and wig by my hairstylist. I believe this contest ends on Tuesday the 30th. So hurry up guys, you have a couple days to get on that. It will be really, really amazing to see who wins. Let's get right into this video. Stop chasing men. I know that a lot of us ladies find ourselves in this position where we don't even realize that we are chasing the guys that we desire. Guys, if you hear that in the background, it's literally the rain. It's pouring in New York. I think it's important for us to take a step back and understand that when we choose to chase a man, we automatically lose. When you chase men, you compromise and you lower your standards because it is not a natural thing to do. You know, you devalue yourself and the next thing you know, boom, you are fighting common sense and falling for any of his lies and deceit that he's trying to pull over your eyes because you've already crossed the line as soon as you started compromising and running after him. So naturally the question becomes, how do you know if you are in fact chasing a man? Well, let me help you out. You know you're chasing a man when you have to ask the following questions. How do I get him back after he ghosted me? How do you get him back after he ghosted you? If a guy ghosts you, it's simply because he wasn't really that interested and is talking to someone else. I mean, if anything, let the trash take out itself. He eliminated himself. Good, now you know how to move from here on out. You clearly know he obviously doesn't care. It's just that cut and dry. How do I get him, you know, to want me back? I know it's so difficult when dealing with, you know, a situation where you feel like you kind of lost someone and you want to get them back. But this is how I perceive things at, you know, the older that I become. It's kind of just like, I'm not interested in who is not interested in me. I don't care about who doesn't care about me. I just don't have the energy. I don't care. But I understand that at the same time, the younger you are, you have to go through this process of how do I get the guy back, you know, that ghosted me and he, you know, took me out on a bunch of dates and then all of a sudden he doesn't want to hang out anymore and you always have to initiate the conversation or initiate when you're going to see him again and all you guys ever do is hang out at his place. I get that, you know, like I always tell you guys, certain things in life we cannot skip. So once you make those mistakes and you mature and you learn from them, you understand the importance of action and not 
caring for what doesn't care for you. Because if we essentially really understood the genuine easiness and flow of a healthy functioning relationship, I don't think that we would genuinely make the mistakes that we have. And for some of us, unfortunately, that may not have ever experienced a healthy relationship, you really have nothing to compare it to besides what you know or you may know is right in a relationship. But for me, I know that I have experienced, you know, a healthy relationship before and I kind of always compare it to that. That person really loved me. I know what it feels like to be really loved and really cared for. I know what it feels like when a man really wants you, really desires you, really will do anything for you. So based on my experience of that, I know how to identify that in other people. You know, just essentially bending your back and bending your schedule around this guy, chasing him. Big mistake. Men can't and won't value what they don't work for and invest in. If you start off easy and convenient, they will exploit that and you will be taken advantage of. If you're taking Ubers to him and always driving to his house, delivering yourself on a silver platter to him, here I am. He's going to get used to that. There is no initiative anymore to go out of his way to see you, to make plans to go to dinner, because now it's all at his discretion. Understand, we've all been there before, but we just get so used to the routine and we tell ourselves, okay, well, I mean, at least he is hanging out with me because if he really didn't want to see me, I mean, he wouldn't have agreed to even seeing me, not true. Guys are capable of liking us to different degrees because they are master compartmentalizers. I always tell you guys this. So with that being said, if you just simply say, hey, are you busy? Um, I was wondering what you were doing on Wednesday night because I really wanted to, you know, probably get dinner or something like that. If he has nothing to do, I mean, it's a Wednesday night. More than likely, he feels like he's going to sleep with you. He's not going to turn that down. Great. He might reply saying something like this. You know, I'm really busy all day on Wednesday. Um, I won't be home till about like 10 p.m. But if you wanted to come over after, I mean, it's up to you. Uh, you can if you want. Then here you go. Wow, look at him. He's so busy, but he still just wants to see my face. So he's telling me I can come over after 10 p.m. No, okay? What he's doing is he's probably going to go to dinner at 7.30, okay, with another girl, come home, bang you, okay? And either you go back home or you spend the night, Monday morning, boom, you're out before 8.30. Great plan, great plan. But to you, it reads as something else. You simply forgot the fact that you're the one that had to initiate plans. Two, he didn't even make plans with you. He said he was busy till 10 p.m. He's working late that night. He has a family thing. No, he just doesn't want to see you to go out with you. Even worse, hopefully that's not the case. He doesn't want to spend the money. So instead, he's like, come over my place at a time where knowingly what is really open at 10, a, at, at 10 p.m. for you guys to actually do anything substantial on a Wednesday. I'm exposing the game because they get pretty creative and I want you guys to know what's going on. When you do things like this, this is how you find yourself in situationships, okay? Where your desire gets ahead of you because you really just yearn for that affection from that person. And this is where I start to question the psychology of things, where it's like, why am I feeling like I wanna see this person so bad? Why do I not feel like I have more things to do or things that I could be working on that I want to spend a lot of my time with this one person? And I know secretly, but I'm not paying attention to the fact that he may not even be exclusive with me. We haven't even discussed 
any of that at all. It just seems like, and it feels like, because we have intuition as women, it just feels like if I continue down this route, it will never really go anywhere. But I'm hoping that it probably will, so I'm gonna keep on keeping on. He took you on, what, three dates? And now you feel like it's your turn to really just show him how much you appreciate it because he's gone farther than any other guy that you've dated before. Hmm. Now this is another thing, I was talking to one of my friends about this actually yesterday, where I was telling her, be careful of entering into relationships when you are not at your best. Because yes, you know, we all want to date and things of that nature, but when you have certain, you know, holes, in areas that need to be filled by you, you tend to date people that fulfill those types of voids in yourself. For instance, if you are someone that is very ambitious and you know, naturally we want the best of the best, it's human nature, and you wanna date someone that is successful, but really you feel like, well, that's because I want to be that and I'm hoping that this person could possibly be a crutch in that. It's a dangerous spot to be in because we end up depending on that person so much. That person sort of becomes our entire happiness that we are not able to actually do the work on ourselves like we thought we would or that we thought we would be assisted in. This is why having your own hobbies, having your own life is so important because that way you're not waiting around for this person to text you back or anything. You were able to clearly see logically, this person is not reciprocating the same amount of desire that I am to him. And, um, and remember, especially in the beginning, the desires for men and women are going to be different because a woman can look at a man and say, oh my gosh, that looks like somebody I would wanna marry. A guy will look at a woman and say, that looks like somebody I wanna bang. Do you understand? The motivations are different, especially in the beginning. So you're leading with that sort of mentality and he's leading with just the banging mentality and you guys are already off on the wrong foot. Now what I'm saying is knowing what you know or knowing what you know now, it's important to identify that, not let your desire get in the way of your common sense. It's okay to actually desire wanting to get married and things of that nature, but you have to make sure that you're not making that so obvious because no one likes desperate people. No one likes someone that it's so obvious what it is that they want. It's unattractive. And in addition to that, you don't want to start to feed yourself lies of trying to put this person in this category to mold him into what it is that you, you desire because he very well might not fit. Another thing in regards to desire, we need to have self-control. And I'm not talking about self-control where you're already over his house and you know, you're, you, you know that you will not let him sleep with you because if anything, you will just sleep on the other side of the bed. No, self-control begins with not even going over his house, putting yourself in that position anyway. Because after a while, it all boils down to science. Science takes over. You're already attracted to this guy. Men love sleeping with women all the time. I mean, that just goes without saying. And now you don't want to put yourself in a position where you have to even pass up on his advances. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's where the self-control really begins. So when you give, 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 and you turn around and you're just like, why do I feel like this person isn't really liking me back? It's because you gave more than you received. Men are not going to just ghost someone that they've invested in emotionally, financially, and spent months you know, dating. They're just not typically going to do that because they would look dumb. They already put in too much work to just, and money to walk away and be like, oh, I'm, I'm ghosting her. They don't have a reason to. But when they've done the bare minimum and God forbid it impresses you and you're meeting them at the finish line before they get there all the time, now you've become predictable and they know that you're chasing them. 
they know that they don't even have to remember to make plans with you because you're gonna do it anyway. You're actually gonna remind them that they need to make plans with you. And then conveniently, he's never really available in the day except what, once every two weeks? And he wants to stay local around his house because he wants to shoot back over just so he can get with you. All right. And you think, wow, he's, despite his busy schedule, he's just still making time for me. And I know that he's busy, so I only think it's fair that I, you know, kind of meet him halfway. We don't need to. We don't need to. If he really wanted you that bad, he would make sure that he's making plans for you. It's just like, ladies, every single time in the beginning, guys are so consistent every single time. And more than likely, we don't reciprocate that in the beginning as much as they do until we go in that first date, until we start hanging out with them. And then we realize, hmm, I actually do like this guy. So we start reciprocating and just opening up, being as wanton as possible to really show them, okay, I like you back now. And then that's where and when we fall off the rails. And it's kind of just like, all right, they did their job already. They chased me already. And now you're going to chase them for the rest of their relationship. No. I have said this in a video before. It's just this cut and dry. If a guy wants to see you, he's going to make time to see you. If he's thinking about you, he's going to text you. You ever date somebody and you're talking to them and they are so consistent with speaking to you and you're not really paying attention to them, but you do happen to notice that a whole two days goes by and next you know it, you haven't spoken to them or they actually haven't spoken to you in a two day time frame, and then you just happen to shoot them a text for once, hey, and they respond like a day and a half later saying, sorry, didn't see this before. So you manage to magically not see the one time I text you, but every other time before then, you were just on it, whether I was responding or not. He's lying. It feels good to be pursued, right? It feels good to be chased. It feels natural to us to be chased, or at least it should. So why would you want to relinquish your power to giving up that dynamic and now you're the one doing the chasing? This is going to weed them out very easily by you understanding that, hey, does this person really want me or not? What is this person's intentions? How long is this person willing to court me, invest in me, do all these things in effort to actually proving that they really actually do like me like they say? Men love the challenge of conquering something that is new. That's why they're so consistent when they first meet you of constantly communicating with you. It's a new challenge. Another way to know if you are chasing a man is by trying to buy his affection. You cannot buy a man's affection, okay? That is just really sad. And if you're doing that, you just have to stop because you're going to be looked at as one or two things, a mother or a friend. And I'm guaranteeing you that you don't want either of those. I had a girl that messaged me the other day saying, should I financially support my boyfriend? And I'm thinking, well, yeah, of course, if you want him to take that support and support someone else with it. Like, and I get it. Like, you know, we as women, it's natural for us to nurture. So what we do is we want to meet those guys that are not where they're supposed to be and help bring them up. But that's not our job. Men actually need to fix themselves because they're not gonna appreciate you, the one that stayed with them in the trenches and you were the ride or die. They leave the ride or dies, okay? You want someone that's going to cherish you. You want someone that's going to be in love with you, not love you, have love for you by default because you were the ride or die and you knew what they were like when they had nothing because you're going to be very hurt when he takes the something you helped build and build that with someone else. 
you're going to be hurt. Don't make that mistake. Well, my circumstance is different because he knows that without me, he has no place to live. And we have that understanding that he would never leave me. Men are gonna say anything to keep living in your house, to keep getting all the benefits, cooking, cleaning, all these things, and essentially being your son and your roommate just to keep getting consistent sex from you and they get a place to live? Do you think that's gonna make him fall in love with you? No, it's going to make him stay with you until he stacks up, which is essentially what he's probably doing because he doesn't really have to pay for much with you. Stack up, stack up, and still leave you. When I was 21, I was dating this guy and he had couldn't keep a job, nothing, and I was 21 at the time and I was paying for dates here and there because I felt bad and I wanted to be understanding. And then I quickly learned like, ew, like what am I actually doing? Like, it was just such a disaster with this person. He did not have his life together at all. And he was 27 at the time. I'm sure that did not make him want to stay per se. It was just like, wow, this girl is, you know, doing a lot for me, so I really appreciate that. But then I also quickly learned that he had that dynamic going with a lot of his friends that were girls. Because there are also exceptions to the rule where there are guys that, I mean, dare I say it, they're comfortable with women actually providing for them. And those are the men we stay clear away from. Because what kind of man is that? How can you genuinely respect that? What, what are you doing for me that I can't already do for myself? I, I don't get it. Steve Harvey said in his book, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man, that a man's job is to protect, profess, and provide. It's so simple. Play by those rules. If you already know that that is their job, then you do not fulfill those roles amongst the many other things that we ordinarily have to do as women. Make sure that we take care of ourselves, make sure that we keep ourselves looking young, you know, have babies, lose the weight after we have a baby, a whole bunch of things, clean the house, all this stuff, if that's the lifestyle that you want. But women have more obligations in regular everyday stresses than men do. So that's why it's so important to not take over his role now too. Professing your love for him, your desire for him, paying his way to do things and trying to protect him and get defensive every time you get a phone call from your mom asking what is he doing living with you? Where is his contribution? Mom, you know nothing about anything. You don't know what it's like to really be down for a guy, to stay with him. <laughs> not on my watch. Not on my watch, I'm not gonna do that. In conclusion, do not ever, ever, ever chase any man. Men never seem to forget that there is no shortage of women, but we as women tend to always forget that all the time and put all our eggs in one basket. Where's your roster? And, understand that you are the prize. There's a story in the Bible where, I don't even remember who it was, that worked for seven years to marry Rachel. And in the end, when he worked for those seven years, the father gave him the sister instead. Didn't even give him the one he wanted. And then told him, well, if you actually really do want Rachel, you have to work X amount of more years. And he did that because he wanted her so bad. Hello, back in the Bible days, it's what men do. They work to show us why they deserve us. So if you are someone that feels like, well, I don't need a guy to do all these things. I could do it for myself. Ugh, equality. Why do people feel like they need a free ride places? Well, I just automatically know one thing about you. One, you've never experienced someone actually giving you what you deserve. Two, you also don't think you deserve it. So maybe you're right. Why should you get it if you don't think that you deserve it? It's always people that are living, you know, just such bitter lives that always want to question other people living happier lives. It's always people that are negative, that want to just bring you down because misery does love company. But genuinely ask yourself, why do I get offended by a girl saying that she wants to marry a guy with money? Why do I get offended because 
I don't believe in hypergamy. Why do I get offended because I see this girl going on lavish vacations with a guy and so I'm going to troll her and write on her photo, you are a bum, you have no job and you just want men to do everything for you. You don't see that girl writing on your photo. Wow, you are just disgusting. Like you were working yourself to the bone. You look awful. It must be all the bills you're splitting with your man or lack thereof. Magically, I show up on your feed. Now, for you to be such a hardworking woman, I mean, how did I even end up in your algorithms if you weren't looking for things of luxury? Now, either it is divine connection that God's sending you a sign saying, change your mindset, or maybe you were actually secretly looking it up on your own. You have to understand, if you are someone that does the trolling or you have this envy in your heart for people that you feel like don't deserve certain things, who are you to tell anyone what they actually don't deserve? Who are you? Especially in this matter, live your life, go work your job, and let that other girl that chooses to be taken care of live her own life. Why is it bothering you? It's probably because you wish that you had someone to do the same for you. And don't lie to yourself and tell yourself, well, I like earning everything that I have on my own and I don't ever need anyone to do it for me. We all naturally like free things. There's a reason why we love sales. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, in Bloomingdale's or in Macy's, we love sales. It's a natural human instinct to want the best and to preserve ourselves in effort to getting the best as well. So that's food for thought. I hope I made sense. So that is the end of this video. I hope that you angels enjoyed it. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel, share this video with all your friends. Our next goal is 100K guys, okay? I know it may seem like we are far, but I promise you we're not. Numbers can shoot up very, very fast. As we also know on this channel, numbers do shoot up very, very fast. So share this content with who you feel like needs to see it. Not everyone's gonna be ready, okay? But it's your job to plant the seed if you feel like you must. And also, of course, do not forget to follow me on Instagram. The details for the contest are going to be in the description box below, guys. With that being said, I love you and God loves you. And I will see you angels in my next video. Mwah. <laughs>